guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am drawing a character modeled after spring. So here's a quick sneak peek. And now I've gotten started a bit on the sketch already, but let's finish her up. So I am sketching with my pink Prismacolor Cold Erase colored pencil, and this is my other one. So it's a little shorter, so it's in a little like um, pencil extender thing. I don't know. It's by Derwent. I'm pretty sure I bought it at Hobby Lobby. I don't know, but you can find these at pretty much any art supply store or online, probably. I have the, I only ever needed the one, but anyway. So I had already sketched this a little bit out just because I was um, doing some thumbnail work and stuff and I just couldn't decide how I wanted her to pose. And sometimes I just kind of got to throw away all the thumbnails and just kind of jump right in. So that's what I did, but I only got down her rough like body shape and where I wanted her hands and stuff. And then I quit and started filming so that way you guys didn't miss anything too cool or too important. <laughs> But anyway, I had a great time doing this piece. I was supposed to film it the other day, but I was just, I don't know, feeling uninspired. But today the sun was shining and I had planted some little seedlings and they were starting to sprout and I was just feeling the spring vibes. It is where I live. It got really warm like a few weeks ago and then it got really, really cold again. So. If you can guess, I live in the Midwest. So that's always what happens. It always tricks us into thinking, oh yeah, this is the ideal spring for like a whole four days maybe. And then it got so cold and it snowed again, just a little bit. And now all of a sudden it's like eight degrees out <laughs> and I hate it. No, I mean, it's great. I do love it. Um, winter depression is sad and it is so annoying. So I was ready for the sun. I just don't like it when there's not a, a transition period, when it really jumps from cold to, to from too cold to too hot. You just, you miss all the fun stuff about the sweatshirt weather, it's my favorite. So my concept design for her, what I was thinking is, first off I wanted to put her in like a cottage court themed dress and I, I had sketched out some and I had sketched out one that had looked like I had like twigs all over it with like flowers and stuff and it was cute but I just I just didn't I just didn't want to do it <laughs> so I switched to this cute I ended up putting like little daisies on this and I really wanted to make it look like as if um you know kind of mother nature-esque kind of as if she's the one who brings home all the animals and makes it so everything flowers and stuff as she's walking by. So I kind of have her like blending into the grass, like her dress turns into grass. And I thought it was kind of fun. I may have seen that concept before, but I don't know if you've heard that, you know, like I've heard some artists talk about, can you in fact steal a concept, like an idea? And I, and she had said that I think this was Apple Mint I heard talking. Maybe it's somebody on TikTok, I don't know. That like ideas are almost always unoriginal that with the amount of humans and the amount of time we've been on this earth that, you know, we're bound to have repeat ideas. So I'm sure I saw inspiration like this somewhere, but this is what I decided to do today. And I thought oh, she turned out really, really cute. I wanted to keep her very pastel, which you see later when I color her. Well, actually you saw when I colored her. And I thought that was fun, but I definitely feel like it might be fun to do this with like, almost as if she also is bringing the sun. And so like, it's like dawn. And so the colors are a little darker. Like, I don't know, I think that'd be fun. Or maybe she is like in a darker part of the woods. So there's more shading. I don't know. I just did this cute little like still picture of her. I'm not super great at backgrounds or anything, so. At least, and I try to avoid them a bit when I work uh, traditionally. I just, I have a lot of markers that are dying and, or dead, and I don't want to fill a page with a background and like kill the markers I have left. 
but anyway. And if you saw me tip up the paper, that's because I'm looking at it at such an angle that I tip it up to make sure that she looks okay proportion wise since I've got, you know, I'm not looking top down at it. And I had to give her the little like, you know, when everybody draws spring or springs themed things, always got to include the flower crown, of course, like, is she even spring if she doesn't have a flower crown? I'm not sure I could believe that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> So, and then because I had those little creatures down at the bottom, which by the way, I do not draw animals. I am not good at drawing animals. So that bunny and that little baby deer are, they're not good. <laughs> I added a few butterflies as well to kind of fill the space around her, you know, like that empty space since I don't end up doing a full background. I just color in a little bit of blue. I, I just want you to be able to tell. So I finished the sketch. And I ink off screen as always, and today I inked in a slightly different color. I inked in a Copic multi liner in the color Wine. It is a 0 0.3, and it was okay. I bought this color a long time ago, and I hardly ever use it, so I wanted to try something new. Uh, if I did this again, I would probably have outlined her either in the pink or even just went straight to black or that classic just, you know, ink to a piece look. But I still think she turned out okay. I did mess up on her one arm a bit and her hand, her one hand and arm just, uh, they're, a, they're a mess. And that's what happens a bit when I rush a sketch. So then when I go to ink, I actually have trouble finding where on earth I'm inking, you know, I just, oh man, take your time, people, take your time. That's when you get the best outcomes. So I decided to make her really, really pale because I kind of wanted to, um, I don't know, you know, like, uh, I'm really pasty right now, you know, haven't seen the sun in a hot minute. So I kind of felt like I wanted her to be really pale, but like in the cute way where she's got lots of freckles and like really, really pink blushies and, and I thought she was just so cute. And I decided to make her hair pink because it's cute. <laughs> I just thought it was, I was debating between pink or green, but I decided to make her dress green, so I went with pink for the hair. I also thought about making it blonde, but I was like, I don't know, I just felt like she needed something special because she is in fact spring personified, so <laughs> she needed to be hella cute, so, and not that blonde isn't cute, I have blonde hair, but Pink hair, I feel like, is ideal. That is like peak form pink hair. Perfect.
Now, picking the colors for the little mushrooms and the her flowers and the butterflies, that I did not really think out. And I feel like maybe the piece would have been a little more cohesive if I would have. Because for me, when I, I did the one butterfly as a monarch, because those are like my favorite. They're just so beautiful and I love seeing them around here. And well, if I did that bright orange color, I'm like, well, it needs to be somewhere else. And I made a mushroom that color. And then the other mushrooms, I made like a bright color. And like, I don't know. I feel like I should have either committed to more bright colors and added them elsewhere or I should have stuck it out and done all of the colors, everything in a pastel color. And that's probably what I should have done, but I was just too busy thinking about monarchs that I, uh, said I could have done, you know, how sometimes people will change like the colors of things in real life that exist like monarchs and instead they like, do that same pattern but with like a really, really pastel like peach instead and it looks so good. I probably should have just done that. And then I go in with a purple for some shading. I almost always shade in purple. I don't know why. It's just kind of a style choice. Um, I feel like I've tried shading in a warmer color before and it just doesn't have the same feel to it. <laughs> But I know I don't draw animals, and I know these aren't that good, but I would die for my derpy uh, bunny and fawn. And I like to blend out my shadows with a orangey toned marker. I just feel like it makes, it brings life back into the shadows so that way they're just not so muddy and faded and I don't know. I feel like sometimes using purple can kind of kill the living look of them. So yeah, I like to, you know, Add a little orange to fix it a bit. And now I grabbed my gigantic pencil case of, these are just Prismacolor colored pencils, just the normal kind. You can buy them at Walmart, you can buy them online, you can buy them at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Blick. I love these things. I actually got all of these as like for free. Um, my now husband, then boyfriend's dad was cleaning out a relative's garage and they had passed away and they didn't have any they were getting rid of everything and he found all these colored pencils and asked if I wanted them because he knew I did art and I'm like well of course I do and brought over so many and I was so awesome so then I had to buy this cute little case to you know make it so I could uh, carry them all around with me and stuff and I, I do love them. I never actually tried another brand of colored pencils, so maybe I'd love other brands more. I don't know. But I'm just using these to add some texture into the grass. I add some texture to her hair. I add some, uh, I color the monarch butterfly black part of their wings with these. And I sharpen this cute little blue. They use that to add some blue into the background but I do it really uh, choppy and yes I was cut off there for a bit 
but I use I do it really choppy you know kind of in lines and directions so you can see the sketch lines and I, I think that was really a really cute touch so as this video is starting to wind down if you would like to see more of my artwork please consider subscribing or follow my Instagram which is in the description and I make cute prints and stickers that are available on my Etsy store, which is also linked in the description. I would love it if you would like this video at least, because, you know, I'm a small business, I'm a small creator, and it means the absolute world to me if you support me in any way, shape, or form. I would be forever grateful. I use this pink, I add some texture to her hair. Um, I just kind of do that sometimes because it's just fun. Like when I'm not ready to finish a piece, I'll just keep pulling colored pencils and I'll keep adding little bits here and there. Like I color in her lips a little bit more and it's, it's a fun time. <laughs> there it is, that's, um, I'm sharpening the black so that way I can color the, um, that butterfly's wings, the monarch butterfly's wings. And then once I'm done with the colored pencils, I do use the Copic Multiliner in the color Wine, the same one I used before, and I go around the outer edge of the drawing again just to clean up edges to make it, you know, pop a little bit more from the page. I do that off screen though, and here I am, I go, I'm going in with a Micron Fine Liner to color her lashes black. I'd colored them wine the first time because, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I didn't lose them once I added skin the skin tone over them, but I wanted them to pop a bit more. So then I add a little texture to those sheer sleeves, and I add a little black to the creature's eyes just to darken them up a bit, and I add my white highlights with my Uniball Signo White Gel Pen which is my all-time favorite gel pen. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you think my little spring gal is cute, because I know I do, and I hope you have a fantastic day and that you stay safe. Bye!